Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at variable jumping. So what that means is you can see I have my platformer character here, and what I'm doing is just regular jumping right now. But if I quickly press my spacebar, you can see that I will not get that full height. And if I hold down my spacebar, I do get the full jump. So this is just going to add that ability to do a short jump versus the ability to do a uh, long jump. So let's roll the intro and let's get right to it. So you can see we have our object player here and all this code that we have here is pretty standard for a platformer. I think I may actually just put this on GitHub, but for now uh, you can find it in the description of the YouTube video. So in here, we have a step event and we have a horizontal movement, but we are going to be working on this jump. So right now you can see that when we press our jump key, we just add the vertical movement. And in our case, this is minus 16. So we're gonna be adding negative 16 onto our vertical movement, which will cause our player to jump. So we're no longer on the ground. So we're gonna keep this pretty simple. And I think the simplest way to do this is to create a couple of variables in the create event. So down here at the bottom, we're going to need a variable to tell us when we've pressed the jump key and when we've released the jump key. So let's do those two first. So we'll say is jump pressed equals false and is jump released equals false. So in here, we need to determine when we're going to press this jump key. And you can see I have it set to the space key. So I could go add event and key pressed and then I could say space. But I don't want to do that. What I want to have happen is I want to say if any key is pressed, then we're going to check to see which key is pressed. If it is the jump key, then we're going to apply some code. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way is because if our game, if we allow the player to change this key, we don't have to have a whole bunch of different key presses in here. We can just listen to this variable jump key and that will tell us whether or not the player is pressing the right key. So if we go to a key press, we could easily write a statement to check the last key that was pressed on the keyboard. So we could say if keyboard underscore, and we have a last key equals our jump, uh, key underscore jump, then what we want to do is tell our program that the jump button has been pressed. Make sure we spell true false or true correctly. I'm going to take this code and I'm going to add a new event and I'm going to say key up and go into any. So this is any time we have released the key. Now, instead of saying is jump press, I will say is jump released, and I will set that to true. So that's all we need to do to tell whether or not our player is jumping. Now, what we need to do is we need to count the number of frames our player is holding down the space key or the jump key. So let's create a variable for that in the create event. We'll say jump underscore counter equals zero. And I also need a variable to tell the object what is the number of frames we're going to have before the character reaches the full jump height. So I'll just name this jump underscore counter max, and we could actually use frames or we could use a seconds. So I'm going to set this to say seven frames and I will come back and I will show you seconds in a little bit. So now that we have all of our variables set up, let's make sure we save this and go to the step event. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking out a little bit of code and just kind of rewriting it for us. So right now we have this code that says that if we've pressed against the wall, so we can kind of ignore that. Um, right underneath here, before we check to see if we're on the ground, we're able to jump. What I want to do is I want to check to see if I'm pressing that jump key. So I could say if um, is underscore jump pressed. So if this button is pressed down, then we want to add one to our jump counter. So jump counter plus equals one. The next thing I want to do is if I'm holding down the space button and I've held down the space button for the seven frames, which is the maximum amount, then I just want to get the player to jump. There's no reason to let go of the button. He should just jump automatically. So I need to check the jump counter to see if it is bigger or equal to the jump counter max and if the jump counter is bigger than our maximum value then we can cheat here we could just say is jump released equals true 
So basically all we're doing is we're saying if this counter is bigger than the maximum counter, we're going to pretend that we've already released that jump key so we don't have to do anything special. The next thing we need to do is when we are on the ground, uh, let's take away this code here because we don't need it. So when our player is on the ground, this is where we want to allow them to jump. So we have to make sure that the jump key is released. So we say if is jump released. So now we know we've let go of that space key. Then we this is where we would say vertical movement plus equals um, underscore jump. So this is what we would normally do. But what we want to do is get a percentage of the jump height that we're going to allow. So I'll say var percent equals, and I will say the jump underscore counter divided by the jump, whoops, no, jumper, jump underscore counter max. So pretend that the jump counter is five and we would divide that by 10, then our percentage would be 50%. So that's pretty much all we're doing. However, what we need to do is we need to clamp this value because we only want a value going in between zero and one. So that would be 0% or 100%. Uh, so we'll say clamp, whatever this value is, and we'll do 0 0.00 and 1.00. I'm not sure if we need the decimal places in there. Um, I'm just gonna keep them in there. Uh, let me do that. I'm gonna keep them in there uh, just in case the floating values or anything like that happens. Okay, so uh, we have our percentage here. So this will give us a percentage between zero and one. And all we need to do is figure out how much percent of that jump height we need to apply. So right now our jump is a negative number. So we could we have a couple options. We could either take away the negative number and just have it like that. And or if you'd like to see the negative number there, we could go to the step event. And what we need to do is we need the absolute value of jump. So what that's doing is it's taking minus 16 and it's just gonna make 16. So once we have the absolute value of jump, all we need to do is times it by the percent and that would give us the percentage of 16. So after all this is done, and we don't actually even need the brackets here, uh, we just wanna have a negative number. So whatever percentage this is, so say it's half of 16, this would be apply negative eight to the vertical movement. Now that's actually it. The only thing we really need to do is reset our variables. So we could say is jump pressed equals false, is jump released equals false. Let's make sure we also reset our jump counter to zero and is on ground equals false because we are no longer on the ground, we are in the air. So let's hit F5 and let's see how we have done. All right, so we can move left and right. Let's hold down the space bar. You can see we get that big jump there. And if I quickly press the space bar, you can see that it's very quick, but we get a little jump. So that is it. That's all we have to do. Now, if you're unsure about the frames thing, you can even convert that into seconds. So if we close this and we go to the create event, instead of saying we're giving the player seven frames to perform a jump, we could say room underscore speed times, uh, that's times 0 0.5. So that's gonna be whatever our room speed times half a second. So if you wanted to give the player a full second to get the maximum jump, we'd say room speed times one. So now if we run our game, if I hold down my space bar, I won't jump until I've hit one second and then I'll get that full jump. And you can see, I have to kind of hold my space, well, I guess you can't really see, you just have to trust me. Uh, if I hold my space down for half a second, I don't get a full jump. Um, but if I hold my space bar down for the entire second, I do get that full jump. So this is just another way to do it. So I could say, you know, I only want a fraction of a second. It only takes a fraction of a second to get that full jump. And then if they are really quick on the keyboard or they're really quick on their gamepad, uh, you can see that we either get a full jump or we get a really soft, small jump. All right, and that's it. I hope you learned a few things and yeah, thank you for watching.